Hi, my name is Celia Raymond, and I'm a project manager here at Woodard & Curran. I sit in the Portland, Maine office, and I'm a leader of our Women's Employee Resource Group. This year, we're excited to be celebrating Women's History Month by getting to know some of the women at Woodard & Curran. Today, I'm speaking with Abby Varga. Hi, Celia. Thanks for this opportunity to chat. So my name is Abby Varga. I'm assistant counsel at Woodard & Curran. I joined the company actually relatively recently, at the end of August of last year. So the throes of the pandemic. The support we provide is broad. We're here to help. But my primary focus is working with the business during contract negotiations. Um, I advise on business and operations about contractual commitments. I help uh, with legal matters and in managing the same. And I also have been providing some support to the business in addressing the impact of COVID and do that in conjunction, of course, with the amazing health and safety and uh, HR folks. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Abby. Let's, uh, let's get started. So this is a great question, right? As um, I think the importance of equity and social justice, those are topics that I'm certainly committed to becoming more educated on and in. So to me, equity is giving everyone what they need to be successful. And you have to kind of look at that in terms of equality, on the other hand, is treating everyone the same. So the purpose of equality is to create a level playing field, but that only works if everyone starts the same place. So oftentimes that oftentimes equality ignores the different barriers that people may face because of their race, their age, their gender, and as a byproduct can promote privilege. And so I think the focus on equity that we are hearing more and more about, both you know, on individual levels, but also on a societal level, I think is incredibly important. I recognize how lucky I am to have had the mentorship of people who were committed to helping me succeed. So it's important to me to be a mentor when that opportunity presents itself as well, because I want to pay it forward. And I firmly believe that good mentors can make a big difference. So I would strongly encourage all women to lean in, to borrow Sheryl Sandberg's phrase, and to have confidence in themselves, uh, to know that they deserve a seat at the table. and. I think having a strong mentor who encourages you along the way can make that leaning in easier and make those goals more attainable. Yeah, and another good question, another hard question. So one assumption that I would like to see changed and both in the workplace just in, and in general, you know, I'm the mom of two young kids, a, a boy and a girl, and I think educating even your, your the youth and uh, in the country is, is just as important, quite frankly. But one assumption that I'd like to see changed is the, the quote unquote likability penalty, right? So where success and likability are positively correlated for men and oftentimes negatively correlated for women. So we see that bias surface when a woman is labeled as bossy or aggressive or out for herself if she's really just asserting herself or promoting her ideas. And yet when a man does that, oftentimes that's an attribute, right? That's confidence and he's being strong. So instead of being called bossy, I'd like to see that narrative reframed, right? And so she's strong, she's confident, she's assertive. And so I'd like to see those characteristics be viewed as the positive, positive strengths that they really are for women in the workplace. And in schools and on the playground, so you know, really just down at, at every level. We know that women in other non-majority populations are often held back by bias, lack of flexibility, lack of opportunity, and that equity requires an examination of systems and history and the access people have had to resources, power, and privilege. So as a baseline, we know that, but what I view as the challenge is to, to how we're going to continue to prioritize equity, diversity, and, and, um, and inclusion so that we can provide more equi equitable seats at the table, which of course leads me to the ever-present question, which is how, right? So 
On an individual level, I think we have to be committed to listening, to educating ourselves on bias, anti-racism, equity, and those themes. But I think we also need to speak up where appropriate, be the mentor um, to other women who are striving to be or who are at the table, support their presence, support their ideas, support their contributions. So that on, a, on an individual level, I think is a challenge, right? We need to make sure it remains a priority out in the ethos. On a professional level, I think companies need to seize opportunities to create new paths for success for women and minorities, in particular in STEM fields. So I'm very excited to be at a company that is committed to diversity and inclusion, right? The robust D&I committee, like we've been talking about, flexible mm -hmm. benefits, work-life balance focus, sustained professional development. To me, those all demonstrate that Woodard and Kern is trying to be a leader in the field. So I've enjoyed the conversations, events, information <clears throat> that have been made available to me in my short time here, quite frankly.